AP Biology, Chapter 38, Plant Reproduction, Part 1. Today we're going to learn about how plants reproduce themselves. Remember that flowering plants are angiosperms, and they're the most uh, successful plant on the, uh, on the land. Let's go ahead and sketch this out. I'll circle things twice with my cursor if I'd like you to copy this down into your notes. Remember that animals are multicellular, they're diploid, two sets of chromosomes, and they produce haploid gametes with one set of chromosomes. We have 46, that goes down to 23. The gametes are unicellular, they're only one cell. The sperm and egg fuse together, and then the two cells become one and become a zygote. The zygote undergoes mitosis and becomes the multicellular animal. Not too much uh, complexity there. Plants are a bit different though, and you should know the differences. Plants have a multicellular sporophyte, which is kind of like our life cycle uh, as far as our bodies, diploid cells, two sets of chromosomes. However, they produce haploid spores, and this uh, process is meiosis. So we make our gametes by meiosis, plants make their spores by meiosis. The spore undergoes mitosis to become the multicellular gametophyte within uh, angiosperms, flowering plants. The gametophyte is microscopic, it's within the pollen and within the base of the flower. However, if you remember, bryophytes and even uh, pteridophytes, the, um, the ferns, have a fairly large gametophyte. The gametophyte, if you remember, makes gametes that are also haploid. And if we're going from haploid to haploid, one set to one set of chromosomes, it's mitosis. Keep in mind, two to one, meiosis, one to one, or two to two, that's all going to be um, mitosis. So we have an alternation of generations. We alternate between the diploid part of our life cycles if you're a plant and the haploid part of your life cycle. All right, quick review. Uh, remember, you learned this in um, chapter 29 and 30. Here we have zygote, diploid, undergoes mitosis, becomes the multicellular sporophyte. Meiosis produces haploid spores. Spores undergo mitosis to become the gametophyte. Gametophyte does mitosis to make gametes. Gametes fuse together, become a diploid zygote again. Remember, this was the um, uh, structure in pteridophytes, ferns, that uh, produce both the male and female gametes. This is the gametophyte, and it looks completely different than the diploid sporophyte of a fern. Now, this structure that produces gametes in ferns is very, very small in those flowering plants. If you remember over here, these are called sori, and sori are, are used to produce the spores. They actually um, uh, release the spores. Alright, here we have um, the pteridophytes, and uh, you don't have to know too much detail about this. Uh, just be able to apply the alternation of generations to any question you have about any plant. Here we have diploid sporophyte, become haploid spores, meiosis, gametophyte, archegonium, and antheridium. Now, unless you're looking for a 5 on the AP exam, you really don't need to know that. However, we're going to talk about how the anther is the male part of the plant. And if you know that, anther means male, then if you get a question on antheridium, you can figure out it's the male part that produces the sperm. Archegonium uh, refers to the egg producing structure. The egg and sperm come together, fertilization, now we got a zygote, undergoes mitosis, zygote's diploid, to become the sporophyte that's also diploid. Fern sporophyte is the leafy plant you're familiar with. Fern spores are haploid cells that will sprout into the gametophyte. That little heart shaped structure. If you already have that in chapter 29, uh, then you don't have to write this down. Uh, but you should be aware of how the tritophytes do their thing. Here we have the gametophyte again. Archegonium produces the eggs, and theridium is the sperm producing structure. Archegonium. You don't have to write this down. Antheridia. All right. And you should already have this in your notes. Remember that alternation generations, the only one that has a dominant haploid plant, that's the gametophyte, which is the green stuff on this, uh, this bryophyte, is um, the bryophytes, the mosses. The pteridophytes, gymnosperms, and angiosperms all have a dominant diploid plant, which is all the trees that you see out there. Remember, if it's really close to the ground, it's probably a bryophyte. And it would have a, and chances are you're looking at the haploid uh, plant. Evolutionary advantage, the reduction of the gametophyte, once again, protects the delicate egg and embryo in a protective sporophyte. Here's um, sporophytes here, sticking out of the gametophyte. The sporophyte is dependent on the gametophyte in the bryophytes like mosses and uh, cattails. 
And then we talked about this before, sporophyte, fairly large, or rather small in the uh, bryophytes, things like mosses. Then we have a reduction of the gametophyte, and then the gametophyte is very, very tiny within flowering plants. And we learned about this before. Uh, the gymnosperms have the male gametophyte inside the male cone. The female gametophyte that has the eggs is in the female cones. And remember, the, the female cones are woody. The male cones are kind of soft and sticky. And the seeds uh, don't have a fleshy covering of uh, fruit around it, so they're called naked. Angiosperms, male gametophyte, pollen and anthers of the flower. Anthers are the male uh, parts of the flower that produce sperm, or pollen that will eventually become sperm. Female gametophyte develops in ovaries of the flower, and that's going to be in the center of the flower. The seed is protected in the ovary, and the ovary wall turns into a fruit later on that we'll talk about later. Here we have gymnosperms. Remember, soft cones, hard cones. Um, same thing, though. This is all alternation of generations. Let's go ahead and review this and see if you can figure out how alternation of generations applies. Go ahead and pause for a second and describe the steps. We have zygote forming. Zygote becomes the um, sporophyte. The sporophyte will produce spores within these structures. The spores makes the gametophyte within these structures. The gametophyte will make the gametes, and the gametes fuse together again. Angiosperm is very similar. We have the uh, alternation generations once again. Here's the pollen that becomes sperm. Sperm fuses with an egg in the center of the flower. That will be the uh, fertilized egg. That's a zygote. And then the zygote develops into a um, sprouts into a plant right here. That becomes a sporophyte. And then inside here, the sporophyte produces the spores that become the gametophyte. The pollen grains here are the gametophyte for the male and um, fuse together to form the zygote. So for the angiosperms, the sporophyte, without a doubt, is most of the life cycle. Here we have the fruit covering the seed, and that's true of all angiosperms, even if they don't produce big fruits like an apple. Here's some flowers. These are reproductive structures, of course, and plants. But notice, not all flowers look you know, bright and colorful. The bright and colorful flowers are usually um, attracting pollinators or birds, bees, insects, to uh, spread their uh, pollen. The things like um, that don't have very bright flowers, they're usually spread by wind or other methods that are not animals. All right, let's go and write this down if you don't have this. We have uh, the parts of the flower that you should be familiar with. The carpal is the female part. You can think women like to carpool. They're social, so that's female. Then we also have the male part called the stamen, and that's easy to remember because it has men in the, in the name. The two parts of the stamen are the anther and the filament. The filament's just a stalk, nothing more than a stalk. The anther, however, is the uh, part of the angiosperm that will produce the male gametophyte. Remember the male gametophyte within a flower, and you might need to write this down again, is the, um, the pollen. The pollen has the male gametophyte. Then we also have the carpal. Carpal is um, the female part of the plant. Stigma is the place where the pollen lands on. The style is the neck that leads down to the ovary. And then ovary has the ovules inside. Let's go ahead and sketch this picture. Ovules contain the seeds, or will become the seed rather, and the ovary becomes the fruit. Inside the ovule is an egg. When the sperm hits the egg, the fertilized egg inside the ovule um, will get a food source in that seed. Here's another picture. All right, this ends part one of your notes on chapter 38, plant reproduction.